What's up? Collins 101 Persuasive Speech. In America, there were over 4 million slaves prior to the Union victory in the Civil War. Their freedom was soon suppressed by Jim Crow laws, which prevented them from being in the same waiting rooms, from having different restrooms, different water fountains. They were separated into different classrooms, even trains. They weren't, were even, weren't allowed to be a part of a jury or a judicial system. However, America has a rise to the top mentality, which is okay, but we tend to have a narcissistic attitude. We train ourselves to be better than the rest. Whether this be we have more money than them, or we think our skin color is dominant to them, whether we think our gender is over them. My credibility is that I'm a Christian, I'm a white male, a college student, and I have a heart for the world. I understand that America has a narcissistic attitude. Um, we want to be the best, and we want to make it to the top. But America does it however they want to get to the top. They trample over others just to get there. Classism and racism, they are both serious problems today in America. However, I believe that God has created us equal and in His image. He has made us to where we will love others and put others before ourselves. In the next few minutes, I'll share what is classism what, and what is racism. What do they look like in America, America today? and my three-step process on how to rewire American thinking. Which brings me to my first point. What is classism? Classism, according to class action, classism is differential treatment based on social class or perceived social class. Classism is the systemic oppression and subordinate class groups to advantage or strengthen the dominant class group. It is a systemic assessment of characteristics of worth and ability based on social class. My definition of classism is the discrimination of persons or people group based on how much money they make or their worldly possessions. Today in America we have three class groups. We have the poor, the middle class, and the wealthy. The poor obviously can't support themselves. They have to beg from day to day just to survive. The middle class work from paycheck to paycheck to support themselves and their family. And the wealthy have an abundance of income. They don't struggle to make uh, ends meet financially. According to Brandon Gailey, 61% of Americans have to work paycheck to paycheck, which is up from about 43% in 2007. Which brings me to my second point. What is racism? According to an ensemble, racism doctrines are based on reasoning, expressed or implied, or the superiority of one human group over the other on behalf of biological, so social, and cultural differences between human groups that are transmitted hereditarily. Racism, to me, is the discrimination of a person or a people group based on the colors of their skin. However, I was raised in the South. I would see people who were different from me as being different. Uh, they weren't the same as me. But this all changed when I went to Haiti. I'd be going through the streets and kids would be yelling, Blanc, Blanc, which meant white, white, because I was different and they, had, they don't see many white people there. But um, one day I was working on a little kid because I was doing medical work and he wouldn't look at me or speak to me or talk to me. And I looked at the Haitian doctor that I was with and I said, it's because I'm blonde, it's because I'm white, I'm different, I understand. And he said, no, you're not white, you're human. And it really hit me in the heart because America is brainwashed. We have such an attitude towards race that we are completely separate when in reality, God created us equal. God created us in his image. Um, classism and racism prevent us from sharing the gospel of Christ. In our minds, deep down, we believe that we are better than other people, which really means that we feel that they don't deserve the grace of God. But in Romans 3.23 it says, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we have all fallen short. Um, and in John 14.6 it tells us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. 
And Christ is saying there, like, I'm the only way. It's only through my grace that you can come to God. It's nothing you do on your own. And people are on the same playing field because we have all sinned. My three-step process on how to rewire American thinking. Number one, we have to identify and class how we classify others, how we put ourselves above others. In Philippians 2, 5 through 8, it states um, that God made himself, a, Christ made himself of no reputation, being in the form of God, but he came in the likeness of man and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Um, therefore, Christ made himself nothing just so that he could be our Savior. Uh, which brings me to my second point. Determine uh, if your thinking about others is morally wrong and have a willing heart to change. We have to really search deep and decide if the way we see others is morally wrong. And step three, we have to submerge ourselves in the Word of God and in prayer. Um, as God reveals our wrong state of mind. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, um, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing soul and spirit and bone and marrow. Uh, it's a discerner of the thought and intent of the heart. Um, meaning that if we submerge ourselves in the Word, and if we look to Christ, that He will reveal uh, where we are morally wrong, where we are not being obedient to Him. In concluding, I feel like America is brainwashed by a narcissistic attitude. Christians should strive to break this stereotype. So I want you guys to ask yourselves, have you ever struggled with putting yourselves above others? Have you struggled with classism or racism? Have you seen people of a different color as less than you are, or people who have less money, less worthy as you are. As Christians, we can strive to change this stereotype. And this all starts with having a biblical worldview. We have to be based on the scriptures. We have to see everything through the lens of Christ. Um, and our faith in God produces obedience. Our identity produces action. Thank you. Great speech.